In the name of the Father and Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Our Lord, today in the scripture, He's speaking to people who are very religious. And He's telling them that a parable or, a, or an example or an analogy, He's telling them, if I want you, if I want to think of you, I will think of you, okay, the religious people as you split yourself into two groups in the market. One group is crying and wailing, and one group is making fun of the world. And both groups are blaming each other. Both groups are blaming each other. The, one, the ones who are crying, telling the ones who are having fun, we're crying, how come you never cried with us? And the ones who are having fun says, we're having fun, how come you're not having fun with us? What is our Lord trying to say? He's saying that we complain as religious people a lot. And he has given us the answers to all our concerns. But we choose not to focus on the answers. And sometimes, for example, people say, I like uh, events to be done in a certain way. How many events are around? You will find an event that will fit your need. Some people say, I, suck, I don't like this sort of service. I don't like this kind of preaching. I don't like this kind of methods. But there are hundreds. There are many ways. Why are you complaining? Why aren't you listening to what God is saying? If you look at the passage today, actually, our Lord is telling them, that the religious people, there is a big difference between religious people and spiritual people, huge difference. That the religious people rejected the baptism of St. John the Baptist. That's why he was talking about how John the Baptist is the greatest among women. He was telling them, you've rejected the baptism of St. John the Baptist. If you want to like have an analogy of St. John the Baptist, you could think of a monk who lives in the desert and everybody goes to him and thinks he's a holy man. And he comes, preaches, and then he goes back to his cave. That's kind of an image of St. John the Baptist. And our Lord Jesus Christ was somebody who was living normally and socially and talking to people. And all the religious people did not like either of them because they wanted to have life according to their own thoughts, according to their own minds. I was reading Kida last week about the life of monasticism. And one of the things that kind of shocked me is that the author is focusing so much on reminding the monk of the beginning of his monastic life. How did you begin? How did you start with God? Why have you gone so far? Where is the humility that we started with? Where is that purity of heart that we started with? the feeling of unworthiness that we started with. For what God is reminding all people who claim to be religious is you have no excuse. The problem is, is that we are a lot of times kid in our life. I see a lot of kids, they're all beautiful angels, but so we cannot let the kids run in the church. Please, parents, if your child is making noise, please, if I hear some kids making noise, if they're making noise, you can take them outside until they calm down and they bring them back. There's no point in I bring the kids and then they make noise and run and without teaching them how to stand in the church. I remember, Kida, this is off topic, but I remember I had Kida, a wonderful female servant I met a long time ago. And she's telling me when we were children, my mom would hold me next to her. She teaches me how to stand in the church. Now we're not here to make them play. We don't teach them anything. Okay? But we want to make sure that we teach our kids how to stand in the church and how to pray. Had to even for a little bit. Okay? Sounds good. If the child is screaming or crying, you can take him to some outside until he calms down. It's okay. Yeah? Yeah, if the child is crying, you can take him outside until he calms down or close the door. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, you can close the door, Habt, in the back. You can close the door. Close the door, Habt. Close the door. So, last Sunday when we prayed the second liturgy, I actually had a, somebody who came to me and told me we could not pray the liturgy at all. We don't want, the kids are very important in the church, but also the role of the parents and how to keep them quiet, it's very also important. So we're talking today about the role of how God is addressing people who claim to be religious. And by the way, the re there's a reason why this passage is in the scripture. Because throughout all generation, religious people tend to be a cause of division in many places. Religious people tend to be the cause of division in many places and focus so much on their own opinions and instead of focusing on, on the spiritual life and how we can attain the life that God wants for us. And I'll give you guys kida, yani some examples on both sides. A while ago, I had kida, a young girl who came to me and told me, Abuna, I don't have a lot of friends in the church. But though that's okay, simple. I'll introduce you to some of the girls in the church so you can get to know them and serve with them and get familiar. After a month, I came and asked her, how is it going? Actually, terrible. I told her why. Actually, all the girls you introduced me to, they are so good, close to God, but they ask me so much questions about my life. But whenever I ask them any question about their own life, they wouldn't want to share anything with me. Religious people, right? They think they are, have the right to be curious and to ask people their business because they're going to help them, obviously. But when people ask them questions, no, thank God, everything is fine. It's a, it's a problem. I was actually reading to one of the saints and she said something beautiful. She said, I discovered that the greatest sin I'm struggling with is pride. And she said that her pride took two forms. One is that she was closing her heart from inside, isolating herself, and she was not dealing with simplicity, and she was talking too much. But sometimes you find people who are religious people, sometimes when people come to church, they might make them leave sad. And you must have somebody who's not married, every person sees her, oh, oh Bali, when are you gonna get married? Or somebody, for example, doesn't have kids every two minutes. When are you going to have kids? Sometimes things are sensitive to people. And God is saying, be careful. Be careful. You think because you come to church and you serve and you're religious, you think you have the right to speak to people whatever way you want. If, uh, So, for this is one of the things that our Lord Jesus was talking about, is how we, as people of God, should behave in a spiritual manner. Should behave in a spiritual manner. I was actually recently, somebody passed away, and I went to their home, and there was an elder priest who was attending as well, the, in the house as well, and I was very touched by him, because as the mother was weeping, he started weeping next to her. For God is saying today to all the people who claim to be Christian, claim to be religious, why are you fo focusing so much on divisions and opinions and, and everything is available for you to go to God? Why are we living in a life of, we call it victimized personality? Everybody feels I'm a victim. Victim of what? The, the access to God is open 24-7. Why do I feel like I'm a victim? Kullahat feels a victim either because my spouse, my children, my family, my uncle, my aunt, my, my, my. 
God is saying, all this stuff is nonsense. May you have a lot of good to be thankful for. Shankeda, the scripture that talks about how religious people cause, cause harm sometime is all over the scripture. When our Lord Jesus Christ saw a sinful woman who committed adultery, he treated her with compassion. When he saw the priest, the clergy, the scribes, he was very tough on them. I'm saying this because the most important thing in our life is our salvation. And we really do not want the system or the mindset around us to impact how I want to seek my salvation. God speaks to us through his spirit within us and he's waiting to lead us to his kingdom. May our Lord continue today as we stand in the liturgy to lead us to him 